A reading from the Gospel of Mark. And Pharisees came up, and in order to test Jesus, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to put her away. But Jesus said to them, For your hardness of heart he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked him. But when Jesus saw, he was indignant, and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, we hear two key themes in this morning's Gospel. One, on the sacramentality of marriage and the sacredness of that union. And we hear yet again of the priority of children in the kingdom of God. I'll begin with the second of those points. Jesus blesses the children at the end of today's gospel as he has done in some of these previous weeks, bringing the children as the examples of sainthood, the examples of true Christian discipleship, what it means to follow our Lord and Savior and to go out and faithfully preach the gospel. At the heart of this childlike message, using children as the example is a childlike trust and hope and faith and excitement and curiosity. Children have all of these traits. They are excited about life, they are curious, they are interested, but they also trust in someone bigger than them because they know they can't do it all. The children trust, the children follow, the children love. That is why the children are the first in the kingdom of God. So the first thing for you and I this weekend our relationship with the Lord and also in light of our own journey to sainthood. If you're missing joy, if you're not following the Lord as tightly and closely as you can, ask yourself how you can be more childlike. Very often we get off path when we begin acting childish, but the Lord wants us to be childlike, trusting in Him with great love. This takes us to the first part of today's gospel on marriage. The Lord clearly says that once we are united, the way that God made us to be united, we shall not be split apart. This, of course, is on the theme of divorce, something that has plagued society and, and our culture. And so many of us have been directly affected by marriages that have, that have fallen apart, that didn't unfold as planned. This is not the place to get into all the details and the reasons for that. But very, very often, they fall apart because the couple seeks to maintain the unity of the marriage only by their own power. But you and me are broken. All human beings are broken. And therefore, to, to maintain this most sacred unity by simply human power is absolutely impossible. Which is why the Lord instituted this sacrament, to give His healing grace. But just because you've celebrated the sacrament does not mean it's going to be easy. So many marriages, holy families that I know, have struggles every single day. But the sacrament of marriage does, it allows them to, to fully trust in the Lord and to put the marriage in His hands. Being childlike, even though they are adults in this marriage, being childlike in the way that they invite the Lord in. When the times are hard, tough, or scary, inviting the Lord in. And so this morning the Lord invites us, one, to pray for the grace to be childlike yet again. 
That's what we pray for. We pray to be childlike. Second of all, we pray for holy marriages. Perfect marriages are impossible, but holy marriages are very possible. If you've had a rough marriage, pray for healing. Pray for patience, pray for pardon, pray for forgiveness, pray for healing. If your marriage is going well, pray in gratitude. And all of us, let us pray together for all marriages, that despite the crosses that come their way, they may find the glory of God through that sacrament. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.